Okay then, so I'm going to get started um, and then we'll see how we get on today. So, just a bit about me. I'm Sam Hannigan, I'm Program Manager here at Premier Training, So, but I'm also a tutor as well. I do have a small cohort of students that I um, am responsible for and look after and do your marking, etc. Um, obviously, it's the new Q22, so... Is everybody that's in here enrolled with Premier Training and enrolled onto Q22 or Q, AQ2016? It doesn't really matter, but is are you all Premier Training students? Fabulous. That's lovely to hear. Marvellous. Okay then. So what we're going, what I'm doing is, it's it's a while since I've done um, live lessons. I did them just before before lockdown. So hopefully you're going to benefit a lot from what it is that I'm going to be covering. So these sessions for the next three weeks, you can't hear for some reason. Um, I don't know, James. Can you help with that? I've got James in background somewhere to. I don't know if there's something, no worries. Oh, you're all sorted. That's fantastic. It's Oh, it's like magic. Can't see anything. Um, James, what do we need to do? David can't see anything. Might be worth logging out, David, and logging back in. Um, because it's like I say, it's it's the PowerPoint mainly you need to see. You don't really need to see me, as long as you can see PowerPoint. That's the most important. Okay, so we'll we'll we we'll, I'll carry on. Okay, then. So what these live lessons are is basically most of you should be on this book, which is Introduction to Bookkeeping, and it's the AQ 2022 syllabus okay now these lessons i've designed it based around alan's book so alan's in the background as well he's gonna if you've got any questions and i miss it alan will uh, he's gonna support me and answer your answer your questions so if he can't answer them then we're in trouble because he's wrote the book okay then so the the lessons have been written in a way so that by the time we finish today you can go and do assignment one Okay, so all you guys on here, I don't want any excuse why you've not done assignment one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to read the book to you. Okay, you don't need me to read this book. You can read it yourself. What I am going to do is I'm going to put the book into plain English. Uh, or should I say, I shouldn't say plain English because it's, it is a very, very good book. Um, however, um, I'll, I think they call it simple Sam terms because I like everything to be to be simple. OK, so what's going to happen is we're going to go through um, chapters one, two, three and four. Like I said, there's not going to be many words on the on as I'm going through. I will be doing calculations and I'll be talking you through it step by step. If you have got any questions, please enter it in the chat box. OK, and like I say, you can use your book alongside what I'm doing. Everything that I've put in here is basically what's in the book. OK, so the first thing I'm going to start off with, though, and I'm just taking it a bit out of sequence because this is really, really important. OK, when we talk about accounting and bookkeeping, People think that it's, you know, it's meant to be really difficult because it's, you know, it's, it is a good profession to, to be in. However, it's not. So that's why I'm in this profession, because it's it really isn't that difficult as long as you think logically about it. OK, so everything you're going to do. Yeah. Think about it as you're going along. All right. It's it's not the fact of um remembering everything because you can't remember everything um you need to find ways of remembering things okay okay yeah so 
the lesson is being recorded. However, it won't be available on my PTA until we've completed the unit. So it'll be in about four weeks time because what I wanted to do was the people that come to the lessons, it's important for us to get that, you know, the um, to get that communication going and then there will be uh, broken down and put onto program. So they will be available, but not for um, a few weeks. Okay, then. So going back to bookkeeping, when you start doing this unit, there's one thing or two things that really are going to help you. And these are what we call acronyms. So these are things, ways of remembering um, information. And as you move on with your studies, that becomes quite important because especially at level four, there's a lot of international accounting standards you have to remember. And there's ways of remembering it. Okay. So your double entry bookkeeping, if there's one thing you take from this today, you take this, okay? So this is an acronym. So everything's going to have a debit or a credit. So everything we do with, with bookkeeping and accounting, if you've got a debit transaction, you've got to have a credit because your accounts have got to balance, okay? So if you've heard the saying, balancing the books, that's exactly what we're doing. So remember, if you've got a debit entry, you've got to have a, a credit entry as well because the books have got to balance. A bit like some uh, old-fashioned weighing scales, yeah, where you're trying to get both sides to balance. Okay, the, a way of remembering which side of an account things go on, your debit, so if you think of pearls, yeah, you know, necklace, pearls, your debit is P, purchases, E, expenses, A, assets, R, revenues or receivables, L is your liabilities and S, your sales, okay? Now, the receivables is obviously the terminology for the new Q22. So, I've put revenue stroke receivables because when we talk about them, it, it's, it's like additional income, okay? So, when I talk about purchases, I mean things that you're buying that you would resell to a customer. So, if you are a mobile phone shop, for instance, you will be buying mobile phones in that you're going to sell to a customer, okay? If you bought um, a delivery van, because you're going to use that to take mobile phones to shops, etc., that's not a purchase, okay? Because you're not selling it to a customer. So remember that for your studies, and especially if you're in here and you're on a higher level and you've come in to do a refresher, okay? Expenses are day-to-day -day expenses of the business. Rent rates, light, eat, telephone, insurance, da da da, -da these thousands, okay? So expenses are always a debit, okay? When I talk about assets, there's what we call non-current assets. So you've got non-current assets and you've got current assets okay your non-current assets are items that the business owns and the, it's going to last longer than a year so equipment office furniture motor vehicles um machinery okay anything the business owns that it uses within the business and it's going to last longer than a year Current assets are what the business owns or is owed, but the value changes regular. So things like your petty cash tin, um, your bank account, if it's positive bank account, you've got um, what we call trade um, debtors or trade receivables, as it's now called. Um, you've got inventory, which the old name was stock okay so anything the business owns but the values change regular are current assets okay remember when i said bank account if the bank was overdrawn yeah then it would become a liability it's not an asset petty cash for instance can only ever be an asset because if you're like me you've either got cash in your purse or you've got zero You've never got a negative amount in your 
purse or wallet. Okay. Re revenues then. Revenues are your sales. So if you're a mobile phone shop and you're selling your phones, that's your revenue. Okay. Receivables means your trade receivables or uh, or money that's owed from said discounts received or rent received, things like that. So money that's gonna that you're bringing in from other sources, which are not sales. So like I said, discounts received is very popular at AAT. Um, you're talking rent received is popular. So it's other money that you're receiving in. Okay. Liabilities then or amounts that the company owes to somebody else, okay? So you've got non-current liabilities, which is anything that you're going to pay back longer than a year. So your bank loans, for instance. And then you've got current liabilities, which means that it's got to be paid within 12 months. So this is going to be things like your VAT man, your, your creditors, your suppliers that you buy on, on credit. It's going to be... I don't know, basically anything. So it, like your pension schemes, if you've got staff in pension, that's all got to pay, be paid within a year, okay? And then obviously your S, your sales, is your trade sales, okay? Or you've got another acronym and it's called Dead Click, okay? I personally use pearls because that's what it suits me, but I've always got dead click in my mind, especially when it comes to drawings and capital, okay? Because that, it, it does help for that. So again, debit your expenses, debit your assets, and debit your drawings. And what I mean by drawings is this is money that the proprietor of the business, the owner of the business, has withdrawn, Okay, for their own personal use. Liabilities is exactly the same. Income is your sales or your discounts received or your rent received. And capital is money that the um, proprietor has invested in the business. So they've put the money in. Okay. So you will only normally see in a drawings and capital account, money that they've drawn out, capital that they've put in. Okay, so one's a liability and one's um, classed as an, well, an expense, really. Drawings as an expense because they're withdrawing it from, from business, okay? So is everybody okay with that? Are you going to remember pills and dead click? Don't want to get to anybody's marking and see that they've got it wrong, yeah? Okay? Any questions? Excellent. Oh, fantastic. We're doing well so far. Okay, so that slide one, we've done well with that. Hang on, I'm just trying to find my little... Right, okay. So, we're going to go down here, and I want you to put D or C, okay? As quick as you can. Purchases, then. As soon as I see an answer, I'll tick it. So, purchases, well done. Sales. Credit, well done. Rent. Rent, yeah, perfect. Rent, it's an expense. Telephone, excellent. Receivables, ledger control. Now, be careful with this, yeah, because this bit's going to throw you, okay? A receivables, ledger control means that the money is owed to the company by our credit customers. So, it's actually an asset. So would it be a debit or credit? Debit, perfect. So if your receivables ledger controls a debit, your per payables ledger control is going to be a credit. Fantastic. Capital. Perfect. Drawings. Excellent. Motor vehicle, so this is an, something the company owns. Fantastic. Cash, this is your petty cash. There's only one way for this. Perfect. Cash at bank, so this is money at the bank. Brilliant. Purchase returns. So if purchases is a debit, 
What's purchase returns going to be? Fantastic. Oh, you're good, Jarlot. Okay. If sales is a credit, what's sales returns going to be? Excellent. Okay. Inventory at the start of year. So stock at the beginning. So stock that the company had. Fantastic. And what about money that we owe to HMRC, VAT that we owe? Oh, brilliant. Well done, guys. That's absolutely fantastic. So, again, it's only second slide in. That was brilliant. So, if it's new to you, this, you've just done amazing. Okay, let's move on then. Okay, then. So, when it comes to selling... Have I got a... Oh, my mouse here. Yeah, this is better using my mouse, I think, with it. Okay, when it comes to selling goods and services, then. So, when I talk about a cash sale, that means that... So, for instance, we'll go back to a mobile phone shop because it's the best one to, to think about. So, if I sell mobile phones, yeah... And you pay me straight away, that's a cash sale. Okay. So because the I'm giving you a phone, you're giving me money, it's a cash sale. Now, what I need you to understand about this is I don't necessarily mean physical pounds and pence. Okay. If you did me a bank transfer, for instance, if you did me um paid on debit card. If you paid on credit card, if you paid by check, which we don't normally use checks now. Um, so any any payment method that pays me straight away is classed as a cash sale. OK, so I want you to think about that. So things like um, if you used a debit card, I know if I use a de my debit card, it affects my bank account straight away. OK, but if I was to give somebody a check, it would probably take it takes around five to seven working days to be able to clear the check and get it in your bank. OK, and that's when we go into bank. Now, obviously, you've got your camera on your phone, take a picture at front and back and you can deposit into your account. Now on straight away. But cash sale, remember, is the payment for something immediately. OK. So I don't necessarily have to mean it's pounds and pence. Okay, so like I said, credit card. See, here, look, I've uh, I'm in front of myself. Okay, so they're the, they're the types of payment method. Again, please don't think that I just want you to listen to this lesson and then go and do all the assignment. I'm just taking bits out of the book. I, it is so important to read Alan's book and do the questions in it. Okay. All I'm doing is, is taking it out to make it a little bit easier for you and doing it in bite-sized chunks, all right? But please, please read the book. Okay, so when I talk about credit then, I'm talking about selling goods or buying goods and paying for them later, okay? So things like um, you might have a customer who orders 200 mobile phones for their shop and they pay 30 days later, Okay, that's what I mean by a credit customer. They are your trade receivables. They owe you money. They're an asset to you. If you were to buy something and pay for it later, that becomes a trade payable because they are a liability. You owe them money. Okay, so to the business, they are a liability. So it's really important you understand the language behind it. Like I say, it's not difficult as long as, you know, if you think of receivables, you're going to receive the money in at some point. So that's an asset. Payables, you're paying it out. So it's a liability. OK, does that make sense? If I'm going too fast, because I do get quite excited when it comes to accounts, please let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll slow down or go back over anything. OK, so that's your cash sale and credits. OK. OK, so now we're going to look at the documents that we use. OK, so the first thing you need to be aware of is an asset or quotation. It's normally quotation that we will that we'll look at. 
So a quotation basically says, this is how much I'm going to charge you to do that job. Okay, so if I'm doing a set of accounts for a client and, you know, it's January, accounts have got to be in and tax paid by 31st. If a new client comes to me now, I'd charge them a premium. So I'd give them a quote and say, to do your accounts, it's going to be, I don't know, two, three hundred pound, whatever. Okay, that's me giving them a quote and I'm committed to doing it for that price. Okay. An estimate is like your typical builders, I suppose, or your tradespeople, where they really don't know the fixed price or in case, you know, it could be that they're building a house and then, you know, there's there's problems when you've dug out all the, um, what's it called, when you have to, footings, that's it, when, you, when they've dug footings out. So builders and people like that don't know what the what they're up against so it, it's more likely to be an estimate rather than a quotation okay <clears throat> the next thing is a purchase order so if you say yes i want to go with that and you'll then send a purchase order to confirm that on quotation number abc one two three it's the price of this this is the services are products you're having and this is the agreed price okay obviously if there's VAT on that it would be you'd add VAT on but you're saying this is the price plus VAT or whatever depending on if you've that registered okay that purchase order then becomes a document that the business will use right the way through up until delivery up until invoice okay so it's basically our starting point so right they want 500 mobile phones it's these mobile phones at this price and then we'll pack it up get it ready for delivery and then we'll send it out with a delivery note so the delivery note is confirming or it should confirm what was on the purchase order and that what's been delivered is the same as what's been ordered, okay? So, for instance, if they come back and say, well, we ordered 500 mobile phones, but there were only 400, yeah, you've got a delivery note there and a purchase order that would match each other and say, well, we know that there were definitely 500 in there because it's been picked, packed and signed off. The delivery note then is being signed to say that they agree with it. Okay, so if everything's right, then the delivery note can be signed and it's proof of delivery. Once that's done, then we can invoice. Okay, so your invoice again is making sure that the quote, the purchase order, the delivery note all match and the invoice is, cre invoice is created correctly. OK, so it's really, really important that as an accountant or a bookkeeper, whichever way you go in, you are accurate because this is somebody's business. If, for instance, you sent an invoice out and it were incorrect, the customer is that likely to hold on to the payment until it's correct or until you chase it and then they tell you that it's incorrect. OK because that buys them more time, which obviously makes the cash flow better. Okay, so there's lots of things when you're dealing with accounting and bookkeeping that you've got to be aware of. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go on to discounts. So we've talked about the um, information, the, the documents, etc. But if you're, work, if you're in business, you'll need to be able to keep generating sales, okay? So what we do at Premier, if you're enrolled on level two and you want to go on to level three, there, could, there would be some kind of incentive, financial incentive to help you move on to, to level three and so on. Because the one thing that we don't want to do is enroll you on to level two and then not you know, support you through level three and four because that's that's what we're here for. So your discounts come to basically say, come back. We want you to come back. You know what I mean? So this is what businesses do. So trade discount, okay? Trade discount means that 
And a good example of this is my daughter works for Screw Fix, okay? And they've got a trade side. So people that's got big companies and they buy a lot of plumbing or electric, electrical equipment and so on, they are given a discount through Screw Fix for them continuing to re return as a customer, okay? That's what we mean by trade discount. So if you go in and you've got it costs hundred pound and they're giving you ten percent trade discount, what you're actually gonna pay is ninety pound. Okay. So there might be on some invoices where they've given trade, but you don't actually see the trade discount separate. Okay, it could just be shown at ninety pound, but you know that they get that discount because they're continuing to keep returning as a customer. Okay. So again, yeah, loyalty, that's a good word. So it's it's to, you know, to say thanks for being loyal and keep coming back. It's like, who's got one of them um, cards, you know, like when you go to a Starbucks or a coffee shop or whatever, yeah, and they keep stamping it and then you get a free coffee after you spent like 300 quid at Starbucks or whatever, and they give a, a free coffee to say thank you so much for spending that much on coffee. Yeah, that's that's loyalty. That's loyalty discount, but you, you're just getting a free cuppa. Okay, then, bulk discount. So, bulk discount means that the more you buy, the cheaper you get it, okay? So, again, if you're buying wholesale, your mobile phones, it might say if you buy between 1 and 50, it's 50 quid each, or if you buy 51 to 200 it goes down to 45 pound each okay that's bulk discount so that's totally different to trade discount trade discount is your loyalty put bulk discount is on how many you buy okay now this one's important prompt payment discount or early settlement discount i'm sure it's still called prompt payment discount but you know it's in the book, so if not, it's either cash settlement discount or early payment discount, okay? Now, why do you think we offer this? We offer this because it, it basically encourages customers to pay us early. So if you've got an account and you're not paying for it, you've got 30 days credit, yeah, and we said, well, if you pay it in seven days, we'll knock you another 3% off or 5% or whatever. It doesn't sound a lot if you're only, uh, say, £100, okay? But if you worked for Set Council and you worked in the housing department, I don't know, I'm just making this up, and in the housing department, you are responsible for doing all the repairs to houses, Yeah. If then you invoice the council and they say, well, if you pay me within seven days, this, you know, £500,000 invoice will give you 3% off. It then makes it worthwhile because it's a lot of money. Yeah. So the higher it is, the better it is. And it's also very, very good for cash flow. So it means that the business is going to keep getting cash coming through the door. And that's what it is. Remember, Cash is king. You can't live on fresh air. You need cash to survive. Okay, so that's where the prompt payment discount comes in. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, you okay so far? Nobody's fell asleep yet? Fabulous. Okay, then. So let's have a look then at our calculation. So I think these this is in your book. Um, so because I've used it, tried to use examples from the book, so it makes it easier. So we've got 50 rolls of material at £75 a roll. Okay. We give them 10% trade discount. So first of all, you need to calculate what we owe. So we've got 50 times by £75 equals 3750. Okay. We're then going to give them discount of 10%. So we're going to knock off 375. Okay. So the total amount owing 
put that in brackets so you know when you come back is three three seven five okay if then i wanted to charge 20 percent vat yeah so that is at 20 percent three three seven five times by 20 percent would then give me vat of six seven five okay Remember that VAT is added on to the net amount, yeah? So that would give a total owing gross of 4050, okay? So remember, when you do um, trade discount, you're working out the total and then you're taking off the trade discount, okay? And then you put in your VAT on. So when you return it, so say for instance, they returned a roll of it, yeah, you can't just return it at £75 a roll. You've got to take the discount off it, okay? So it'd be 75 minus the £7.50, okay? Is everybody okay with that? Because we're getting into calculations now, yeah? Fabulous. Marvellous, marvellous. We will if we can move on. Okay, so this is a typical invoice. Okay, the, these are all in your book, so I'm not making anything up. Um, so this is just how it's laid out. So if anybody works with Sage or QuickBooks or Iris or whatever, these are just everybody's invoices can be adjusted to how they want. You've normally got your... Um, business name yeah and then you've got your customer this is your customer and the delivery address yeah so that's the delivery okay now i just oops it is eh? where's that gone hang on a minute right i just want to pick up on something where students lose valuable marks okay so there's a lot of people in this world and there's a lot of people got same surname so smith you know, he used to be very, very popular. Um, there's lots and lots. Now, what you've got to understand is this client's name is Ar Arpatel, okay? And what we've done here, and it keeps doing that. I think, I think I'm a bit heavy-handed, okay? And what we've done is for each invoice, we've given it an account number, okay? RP01. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. RP01. Okay. What about then if I got a Robin Patel or a Roger Patel? You can't just make up account names because an account numbers because it, it's just you're going to go off, off the Richter scale and you're going to get confused. So what you would do is you would still use the same letters RP but you'd use the next number, so zero, 02. So then you can go up to as many as you want, okay? It's really, really important that I pick up on that because I've noticed through marking assignments that students will just pick two letters out of the names and then put a number on. Um, but what you're doing is, is we want to see that you understand that you just use the next numerical number if one already exists, okay? So I don't want you to lose valuable marks on something that's so simple because that one mark might gain you your distinction. Ha, I made that mistake, yeah. A lot of students do. And, you know, I get it because if you're not working in it and you're not seeing how, like, computer systems work and what have you, I understand why. Um, but this one, I, I've decided to point it out specifically so that you guys, all 26 year or whatever, will gain these marks in exam. If not, you're in trouble. OK, so just think about that as, as you start doing our assignments. You know what I mean? Just a hint there. So. OK. OK, then. And then at the bottom of the invoice, you can see here that it says 30 days net. We'll, um, that's the terms of the invoice. So if you're paying 30 days, 
that's what you've agreed to. And if you pay earlier or within seven days of the date of the invoice, we'll give you 2% cash discount, okay, or 2% prompt payment discount. So that would be 2% of the 4050 okay? Now, to work out, so it's saying seven days, so what you do is look at the invoice date, yeah? The invoice date is the 25th of August, Seven days on to that, I don't think there is a 30, 32nd of August, is there? No. <laughs> so that would mean 1st of September. So if it's paid on or before the 1st of September, they can have the discount, okay? So that's when we offer that early settlement or prompt payment discount. Okay. Right, okay. Other documents that relate to sales then. So we've got a returns note. So goods returns. It, it, is it always calendar days as opposed to working days? Yeah. Yes, it, it, I, I don't think I've seen any example. If not, it would say working days. But the reason why I believe it is just days is because when you're in an exam, you haven't got access to a calendar. So I think it'll just be number of days, okay? So because otherwise, yeah, you're all going to be trying to think, wow, what date? What date were it in two thousand? Day were it in two thousand and seven on twenty first of August? You see what I mean? So yeah, it will definitely be days. Okay then. So if we've made a sale, and we've made a sale to a credit customer. And they've returned some goods because they're faulty. So out of there's 500 mobile phones, we've dropped one box and 100 of them's got smashed screen, okay? A, re a goods returns note or a returns note would have been sent back if we've delivered the goods, yeah, and we've asked the customer to sign the delivery note, but they're saying, well, I'm not signing it because these 100 that are smashed, then we'd fill in some a returns note and we'd take them back with us, okay? If they are, said so they're done on DPD, so, you know, we all like to do a bit of internet shopping, don't we? So you bought a dress, some trousers, whatever, and you've paid for it or you've ordered it, it's come and you want to send it back, yeah? You've got a proof of delivery to say what you're sending back, all right? That's like, that is your returns note. Okay. If you're a credit customer, we would then send you out or create a credit note. So you've got an invoice on your system. You've returned some goods. So we need to credit your account to reduce the amount that you owe. Okay. You would also do a credit note if you were doing your discount. So if somebody gave, paid um, early and you gave them the prompt payment discount, yeah, you know, when you do your discounts allowed day book, etc., they're basically credit notes. So we're going to credit them for the amount of discount that we're giving them for paying us early. Okay. But a credit note basically means that we're crediting them back some um some of the invoice that they've that we've issued. Remember though, if you've given them a trade discount, you've got to take that into account first. Okay. So don't just think, oh, yeah, it's £50 a roll or £50 a, a mobile phone. Think about, have we given trade discount? If we have, you've got to take that off first before then you issue the credit note, okay? Okay, then. So calculating then your credit note based on the invoice that we've previously looked at. So we looked at materials, so we, we were selling it. £75 a roll, yeah? So we've got two rolls at £75, which is 150 Okay. We gave them trade discount of 10%. So we've got to take off £15 before we do finish the credit note, okay? Which leaves £135. So that's the credit note value. What else have we got to put onto that? Uh, 
amazing VAT okay VAT at 20% so we've got 27 pounds worth of VAT so what we're actually giving them a credit note for is 162 pound okay so this is just one customer we'll, we're going to go on to day books in a second but this is how it actually works okay so if you're doing an assignment for us and we give you um i don't know a list and you've got to tick boxes and check whether the date's correct, the customer's correct, the customer account number, the details, the amount that they've paid, the amount per unit, da, 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 yeah? What I need you to do is be very, very careful. So make sure you RTFQ. Read the flipping question, okay? It's really, really important because within the data, there'll be information, now, I know accounting students don't like reading. We like numbers. Yeah, am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, tough. You've got to get used to reading and writing, all right? Because as you move on with your studies, an accountant's job now is not just being good with the calculator. It's being able to explain where the figures are coming from. Why have you done that? What does this mean? Da, 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 okay. So you've got to get to a level where not only do you understand how to do the calculations, but you could also explain it in writing if somebody asked you. Okay. Now, we, we're not going to teach you just to pass an exam because that means nothing to nobody. We're going to teach you to make sure that you're ready to be to understand in real world, as far as we can get you in real world, what it means and how you would deal with it. OK, because it's really, really important that you've got that knowledge. All right. So make sure when you're doing these assignments for us, you read the flipping question because it's very, very important to make sure you understand the data, okay? Don't jump straight in with your calculations just because you're good with your calculator, okay? Okay, then. So this is what your credit note's going to look like. Exactly the same. Sorry, I need to leave now. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Yeah, get it. Drop me an email, Angela, and um, we'll. I'll make sure you're up to date. Okay, the next session's next Tuesday, and I think it's earlier, so it, we should be done before school run. All right, but please don't leave your kids at school, and uh, you get into trouble for not picking them up. <laughs> okay, all right then. So your credit note. So you, brilliant. I'll speak to you next week then. So your credit note is showing the information that we need to give to our credit customer to say, look, we've invoiced you this, but you've got a credit note set off for £162. Okay. Now comes the good bit. Okay. This is a statement of account. So a statement of account basically means that these are all the transactions for that one customer. OK, now a lot of people, because don't forget now we're, you know, we're in real world, we're in technology's changed and, and especially since COVID. Yeah. Statements used to we used to print them off, put them in envelopes, send them out every Friday night. OK, now they can be just emailed and they're in seconds. But some companies will still only pay when they've received a statement and the statement basically should be a match of what's on their ledger so what's on their purchase ledger should equal what's on this statement if it doesn't we're going to look for discrepancies okay but a lot of companies will still only pay when they've got the statement and they've checked each transaction okay and all you've got here is you've got an amount that was owed to us at the start so the, it's a debit because it's an asset it's a customer your credit entries are either payments made or discounts given or credit notes. And then your other debit entries is either, you know, invoices that we've received. Okay. 
So you've got your invoices and everything else. So one minus other then gives you your balance. Okay. That's what a statement of account is. It's important to realize that when you're doing things like this, they're in date order. Okay. So everything's done in date order. And I know like we're talking manual bookkeeping here, but when we go on later on and we start looking at computerized, which it unfortunately the A18 now have taken that out of the syllabus. However, we have got um, a SAGE course that we run, um, which is quite heavily discounted at Minix. It's brand new. But it's, it is always worth getting that additional qualification because this is one area that I were quite gutted about that AATs took out because in real world, you need to know how to post transactions onto a computer. OK, it's not just about doing it manually. So if anybody is interested in the Sage one, it's a special price at minute for, for our students and it is a, it's, it's worth having a qualification. Okay, but once you do it computerized, it automatically does it in data order. Could you imagine having to write all these statements up in what my kids said, olden days? You know what I mean? As if I were around in olden days. Um, but yeah, that's what that's what we're looking for for a statement of account. Okay, then. So moving on, if I can click my thing let me move it on with this that's it okay we're going to move on now and talk about VAT okay when I talk about VAT yeah I'm going to look at gross or net gross means VAT is included okay so gross or total could be called total means that the VAT is within it if it says net it means it's not. So you've got to add the VAT on. Okay. Now, remember, VAT is not our money. So we are a collector of taxes on behalf of HMRC. So if you're charging somebody 100 plus VAT, which would be 120 in total, that £20 not yours. Okay. So you have to remember you can't spend that bit. Yes, we'll have purchases that come against it. But in general, the extra 20% is not your money. It's in the revenues. OK, so if we're working out VAT then on a gross amount. OK, so we're going to say it's £120 and that includes VAT. The easiest way to do it, and it's simple for me because call me simple Sam, divide it by six because there's six lots of £20 in there. So you've got 100%, which is £100, plus an extra 20 gives you £20 VAT, okay? So if it's included, divide it by six, and that's your VAT. If, for instance, your VAT turned out to be £1.667, yeah, we're allowed to round it down. So you just knock off that seven. OK, so you just put it as one pound sixty six. All right. So by doing that, your one hundred and twenty minus your 20 pound brings you back to your net amount of hundred. OK, everybody OK with that? Yeah, fantastic. OK, then. So the net amount. OK, if your net amount, which means it's not included, is £100, times it by 1.2, that gives you the gross amount, the total including that. Then divide it by six to get your VAT amount. OK, now I find that easier than any other calculations. There is different ways of doing it. I'm just going to stick to that one because that's easy for me, okay? But when you read the book, I'm sure you'll see that there's different ways you can do it. But remember then, gross or total means that's included. Net means it's excluded. You need to add it on, okay? 
So include, exclude, or inclusive, exclusive means same, included, excluded. Just be careful at terminology. Do not let the examiner trip you up, okay? Read it carefully. Take your time, okay? So then, once you've done your invoices, yeah, you'll enter them into what we call a sales day book. So this is just um, basically like a if if you did it on a spreadsheet, it'd be a spreadsheet. And these this is dated August, so these are all the transactions for August. Okay, it could be the fact that you do one of these daily, yeah, or you do it weekly or two weekly or month, whatever. Yeah, every company is different, but this is what it'll look like. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a date column. This date is the transaction date. So that's when you did your invoice, okay? You've got your customer name, your invoice number, and you can see from your invoices that they all sequentially numbered, okay? They keep going up. That's a way of, obviously, if you've got... Um, investigated by Inland Revenue or whatever, we can see if it jumped from 97 to 7709, yeah, there's a batch of invoices missing Why? okay? So the day book basically puts everything in invoice number order. On this one, yeah, at the minute, I haven't got any VAT in there, but that'll change in a bit. So you've got the amount or total, and then what we've got here is two columns, and these are what we call analysis columns, okay? So <clears throat> I've got an accounting practice, yeah, and I do tax returns, VAT returns, I do management accounts, I do payroll, da da da, da. On my system, I break it down. So I've got tax returns, VAT returns, payroll, self-assessment, da, da, da. Because I want to see which element is making money, okay? So what are my sales for, based on that? That's exactly the same with this. So what I'm doing is, is I'm selling clothes and I'm selling fabrics. So what I need to do is by lumping it all together and not having an analysis column, just having a sales column, if I came to you and you'd got, I don't know, 2,000 customers and you sell clothes and fabrics to them, and I said, right, I want you to tell me what the value in sales is for clothes and fabrics. If it's not broken down, you'd have to sit there going through it, yeah? So this makes management information or financial information more, I suppose, understandable. So I can see in here that, oh, my fabrics aren't selling as much as what my clothes are. That will be that might be because people don't want to make their own clothes out of fabrics, they just want to buy them. Okay, so things like that. So you can also see your analysis columns should total, yeah, and on this on this one, sorry. Hang on. Why does it keep doing that? I think I'm too heavy handed. We're pressing some yeah yeah so your two analysis columns should total the amount column okay that's called cross casting so basically you're, you're making sure that your totals balance if you'd got VAT yeah if you've got VAT in here your VAT plus your clothes plus your fabric would equal your total amount okay which we're going to go on to in a minute Okay then, so let's have a look then if we are entering the day book. So I've got my day book, I've entered my invoices, got my invoice numbers and what I've done is I've just entered the sales and the fabrics amount, okay? So if I wanted to work out then the total, what I'd do is the 350.95, yeah, 350.95 times by 1.2 equals 42114. You can test me if you want. I think they're right. To then work out the VAT, you then divide that by six to get the VAT amount. Okay? 
So based on close then, what would be the amount that I'd put in the amount for invoice number 9636? Let's see how many's got a calculator on them. It's called that. <clears throat> Oh, there's not many with a calculator. Two, I think. Oh, a few more. So you're multiplying it by, multiplying it by 1.2 because you're adding 20% VAT on as well, okay? <clears throat> so if, so go back from here, yeah? Right, 350.95 multiply by 1.2 gives you what? Yeah, which is your 421.14, yeah? Divide your 421.14 then by 6 to get, which I got, your £70.19. Pound okay, so that's the first one. So the second one, yep, you've right with 5, 10, 74. So we've multiplied it by 1.2 because that's 100% of the cost or the sale plus the 20% VAT, okay? So then your VAT amount for that one would be what? 5, 10, 74. Oh, well, that. Oh, yeah, well done, Caroline, F. Bennett, Lucy. Well done, everybody. 85.12. Okay. If I gave you, like I say, if I gave you the just the amount figure, yeah, then you can divide that by six to get the VAT. And if I'd not given you this net figure, you'd be able to then work it out because it would be your total amount minus your VAT, okay? So moving on to the next one then, you've got 32156 times it by 1.2, which gives you your 38587. Let me just see if I can Let me just erase that bit so you can see, yeah. Okay, the VAT on that then would be 64.31, okay? And then so on. So what you're basically doing is you're saying, I know the net amount, which is this. These columns are the net amount. I can work out the gross by times in it by 1.2. And then I can work out the VAT either by saying amount minus the net or just divide the gross total amount by six, okay? Different ways of doing it. Again, it comes with practice. Does everybody understand that? Yeah? Fantastic. Brilliant. Oh, I am impressed with you a lot. Right. Now, I want you to bear in mind what we've got here. Okay. So, when we post our accounts, yeah, and I said, yeah, no problem, Sharon, that's fine. I said about the using pearls, for instance, yeah? What side of the account would the sales go? So think pearls. Perfect, Janet, yeah? So these totals here go on the credit side of that account, okay? The VAT on sales means that it's VAT that we'd owe to the Inland Revenue, so that would be a credit, okay? Those three credits then have got to have a what? Don't forget accounts have got to balance, so... A debit. Well done, Cathy. So the total would be a debit. Okay. Now, the sales day book, remember, is only used for sales that we've made to customers on credit. Okay. 
So what you've done is you've credited your sales fabric, you've credited your sales clothes, you've credited your VAT. And because the customer owes us this money of £2,025.27, pence, that's a debit in the trade receivables, yeah, control account, okay? So, or the receivables ledger control account. There's that many different names of it now, yeah? So, what you're going to do is we're going to enter them transactions in, okay? Now... These accounts are what we call general ledger or main ledger accounts, okay? So what you're going to do is in these accounts, it's always the last day of the month. So we're going to put 31st of August, yeah? Sales day book. I'm just putting it in like that because my writing is quite big. And the amount that I'm going to enter is your 110632 which came from here, okay? So the 58141, oops, there we go. So we've got 58141, sales day book, 31st of August. The VAT amount, 31st of August, sales day book, and it was 33754, okay? So remember, the accounts have always got to balance. So in your debit entry in the receivables ledger account, um, 31st of August, sales day book, um, 202527, okay? Their main ledger accounts or general ledger accounts okay so you can see your pearls sales is a credit yeah money owed to inland revenues a credit it's a liability and money that customers owe you is an asset so it's a debit okay okay then so moving on these are now what we call the subsidiary ledger accounts or the sales ledger accounts. So these are your customers, okay? So each one of these is a customer account. And what you've got to understand is when you've posted them into your customer account, the customer accounts should equal the amount in the receivables ledger, okay? So if you've debited the receivables ledger, in the sales ledger account or trade receivables ledger account, whatever they want to call it, yeah, sales ledger account, you're going to debit it, okay? So you're going to do exactly the same as what you've done, but you're going to use the date of the transaction, which means the invoice date. So we've got 4th or 8th, and we've got, I'm just going to put sales day, but, but you then could add the invoice number, if it asks you to, and then the amount, okay? Then you've got 11th or 8th, you've got sales day book number 3696, yeah, which is 510.74. 3697 were Aris, and that's 18 sales day book 3697 and that was 385 pound 87 then you've got 3698 which was lewis and date was 26 and the amount was 31182 and then the final one was 27th or 8th Sales day book, 36993957. Okay? So those all added together equals that. That's what we call reconciliation. Okay? So that's where we're at when it comes to that. Okay, then. 
sales returns day book then okay so what we've got here pretty much exactly the same but this is aat okay the aat now call it a memorandum account oh there you go thanks alan so the, the subsidiary accounts now are called memorandum accounts called them that years ago so we're actually going back to old terminology i believe okay then so we've got sales returns day book so this is stuff that our customers have sent back to us okay so the amount is the total so to work out the VAT you could divide it by six which gives you eight pound yeah and we know that if you look back at G Hall yeah the invoice around this date related to sales of clothes okay so it's going to go under £40 for clothes. 144 divided by 6 should give £24, which means that we've got £120 under sales returns close. Okay, then what you're going to do, total it up. And we're going to then post it to your main ledger accounts oh. okay so if sales is a credit where's the sales returns gonna go perfect a debit so 160 sales returns day book 31st of august vat then is going to be a debit And then the total is going to be a credit, which means that in the memorandum account, i.e. the customer account, what sides are we going to put these returns on? So it's... So let me just go back to my shit. Yeah, you guys are right. It's a credit, okay? So it's a debit in the sales returns account because your transaction when you made the sale was a credit and these goods now have been returned. So it's a debit in the sales returns account. You don't debit the sales account. You we open a different account called the sales returns account, okay? In real world, it would be different. So if I was sending something back or a customer was sending something back to me, I would debit my sales account, which it relates to. So I would debit the sales account for clothes, okay? In this, we're not. You've got your sales accounts, which are credits, returns accounts, which are debits, okay? So really important because you're reducing that amount of sale. Is that okay, Michelle, yeah? Does that make sense? Right. So remember, use your pills. If if you use your pills and sales as a credit, sales returns has got to be a debit. If purchases is a debit, purchase returns has got to be a credit, okay? So if you can get that pills stuck in your head, everything else works easy around it okay so if it like say if you remember one thing remember your pearls and then everything else can fall into place by either doing what it says in pearls or the opposite okay yeah it, it's fine don't hey don't panic because this is the hardest bit because it's something you've never seen before yeah so remember we're here you know I'm only teaching you the basics now, but any questions you've got, we're still here, okay? So it's the debits and credits. Like I said, if you can get your head around pearls, you've cracked it. It's simple, all right? So you'll you'll be going to bed tonight thinking pearls, debit, credit, debit, credit, debit, credit. I used to do that all the time. I think my husband thought there were a frog in bed. Okay, then. So then when it comes to entering it then in the customer accounts, remember if you've credited your receivables ledger account, 
you're going to credit your customer account. So 6th of August, sales returns day book, 48. 13th of August, sales returns day book, 144. Okay? That's it. We've entered it. So this is your memorandum account. Oh, I have to keep reminding myself of that. Yeah? Or I like to call it my sales ledger memorandum account. Okay. Sorry, remind me there are net figures. Sorry, remind me that. Right. Okay. Net figures. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Your net figures, these ones, have gone in to your general ledger accounts. Okay. Because your debits, those two, equal that. When it comes to the memorandum account, yeah, so that's your customer accounts, it's the total because you can't leave off the VAT. They owe you the VAT, yeah? So that's why we're, we're putting the totals into them memorandum accounts. Okay, yeah, perfect. Okay then, so... Just a couple more slides and then we're done for this week. Okay. So balancing off an account. Okay. Now, please don't think that you're going to understand this straight away. Yeah. It takes a bit of time to do this. All right. But what you're going to do, I don't think I've got a calculator. I'll have to use one on my phone. Okay. So what we're going to do when it comes to... um balancing off your accounts yeah what you've got to work out is which is the highest side okay so and this is not rocket science but i can see straight away from this that my debit side is higher than my credit side okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to total it up so you've got 490 plus 500 plus 360 plus 490 plus 560 plus 620. If I'm wrong, it's because I've got fat fingers. Okay, so the total is 3,020. I'm going to put that figure in both sides of my account because what I'm trying to do, I want to know how much Morrison Sons owes me. Okay, so... What I need to calculate now is what we call the balance carried down. So we've got to get the accounts to balance. Now, the only way we're going to get them to balance is by putting a balancing figure on the lowest side. OK, so the balancing figure on the lowest side would be 3020 minus 90 minus 30 minus 45 minus 58 okay so that gives me 2797 if i've done it right okay that is called my balance carried down okay you can't leave it on that side because it's looking like it's a liability like i owe somebody it so what we do is we bring it down on the 1st of september onto the correct side so that tells me on the 1st of September, Morrison's Sons owed me £2,797. It's a debit, it's an asset, and that's called the balance brought down. Now, the way I remember this is if you've got kids, you know, when the baby's in, you carry them down and you bring, bring them downstairs, yeah? So you're carrying baby down, okay? So you carry down is always on the above the the total okay so it's always above the total yeah and then you're bringing it down onto the opposite side so you're like bringing it downstairs that's where that I look at it a bit a bit crazy I know but you know it's just things that I had to do to remember because you know academically I'm not I'm not the brightest button in the box but it helped me so anything like that, yeah, don't think you're crazy because it might be a pass or fail based on your um, ways of remembering. 
Okay, does that make sense? Can you balance off an account? So you're totaling up the highest side first. You're putting the total on both sides. The balance carried down goes on the lowest side and so on. Yeah? Marvellous. Okay. So what happens then when we've only got one transaction in? Now, in real world, I could go like that. And I know that on 1st of September, I'm going to have a balance brought down of 10,000. 10, okay, that's in real world. That, that's the way that I would do it. I'd just close my account off because it's it, the balance is coming, carrying on because this is an equipment account. So this is a non-current asset account. So it's not likely to change unless I buy some more equipment or I sell or I dispose of some. Okay, but... If I said to you, for instance, if you're on level three in here and you are doing assignment one, I think it is, and we ask you to balance off all accounts, we want you to do it the way we've just shown you. So let me just delete my scribble. So what I would do first is 10,000 on both sides, 31st of August, balance carried down, which means that now both sides balance, and then the brought down figure would be 1st of September, balance brought down 10,000. Okay, so when you do your exam, you will be picking either typing the number in and then from a drop down box, you'll see like an arrow like that, and you will pick the headings. It'll have all sorts in there. It might say bank, it might say balance brought down, carried down, balance brought forward, anything. You've got to make sure you pick the right ones. Okay, your details really, really important because otherwise you're going to end up losing marks. Okay, everybody, all right with that? Yeah, perfect. Okay, then. So the next slide then is basically, I'm not going to go through it. You can do it yourself if you want. I'm going to get James to email you these PowerPoints, okay? Um, if you want to have a go at this, then what I'll do is next lesson, if you get your answers, I'll have completed it. And then we'll learn, we'll work through them. To, we'll work through, we'll see if you've got the same thing, all right? But all it is, is I want you to do the sales day book, the sales returns day book, and then get your, get some scrap paper and do your T accounts, okay? And I want you to post it to the ledgers. So what we'll do on Tuesday is the first thing we'll kick off with is. I want to see if your day book balances with mine, okay, and your returns day book. And then I want to see how you've done your, your entries, okay? Is everybody okay with that? So I'll get these emailed over to you next day or so, yeah? Right. So before we finish, has anybody got any questions? Because you should now be able to do... Assignment one of introduction to bookkeeping Q22. Okay. Any questions whatsoever? There is no such thing as a silly question. Okay. Because somebody else might be there thinking it at the same time. Okay. You do struggle with debits and credits. Okay. Just remember. Yeah, your pearls and your dead click. And also, if you are enrolled and you're up and you're running with your studies, I have got some webinars that I've done just basically on debits and credits, and they are available to you. If you struggle finding it, let me know and I'll um, I'll send you a link. All right, but I'm sure once you go back over it, so a sale goes into the general ledger. 
as a net, right? Caroline, listen, sales pearls is a credit. So the net amount goes in the general ledger as a credit. The VAT account is a credit. And the total goes in the trade, the receivables control account. So those three accounts are all general ledger. So your general ledger has always got to have debits and credits that balance, okay? In the memorandum account, it's the totals that go in, but the, there won't be any double entry. There won't be any balancing it off as a debit and a credit, okay? So remember, general accounts, net, VAT, gross. In your, in your memorandum accounts, it's the gross amount and it goes on the same side as you would put it in the receivables control account. Okay. So you the way you remember it, yeah? So when I talk about pearls, it works with the general ledger, the main ledger. Purchases as main ledger, expense accounts are main ledger, assets accounts are main ledger, um, revenues accounts, receivables accounts are main ledger, um, liabilities, sales, main ledger accounts, Fred, Ginger, Tom, Jerry, memorandum accounts. So if it's a company name or a person name, it's a memorandum account. If it's an expense or an asset like motor vehicles, bank, cash, um, rent rates, telephone, VAT, sales, purchases, purchase returns, da, 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 they are general ledger accounts. Okay. So, Michelle, I want you to think customer names or business names or your memorandum accounts. Yeah, what I'll do is I've got a list of everybody that's here today. So anybody that is here today, I'm going, I'll send you the, get you, James, to send you the recordings and the PowerPoints, okay? So I know you're not here, Sean, for the next ones, but I will make sure that you, you, you get the recordings, okay? So if I forget, please, please, please just drop me a little email at sam.h at premiertraining.co.uk because, you know, I, I do forget things. You will get this, Michelle, and I'll make sure you do. You need any questions, Thursday's my day off, so please don't call me on a Thursday, but I'm, I'm here rest at time, okay? Can't, yes, I will write it there. Just bear with me two minutes then, Flower. Let me, yeah, uh, is it, can I just, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, so it's... Sam dot h at Sam dot h at Premier. Oh, it should be training. I've put an S in there, but it's training dot co dot uk. Okay. Any questions then before I let you go? Please get in touch. You know that's what we're here for, and. For those that are here next Tuesday, I will see. I think it's at one o'clock. Um, I will be doing some evening sessions later on on different subjects. But thanks, Rose. Thanks, Sam. Uh, this has been very... Oh, thank you. No problem. Yes, you'll be able to watch it again. Thanks, Sam. See you. Yeah, speak to you next Tuesday. Oh, thank you, guys. That feedback's really lovely. I appreciate it. Have a fantastic weekend and I look forward to seeing you all or speaking to you all on Tuesday. Great. Thanks, guys.